All right, so what we've done is that we've opened up Excel, we have typed in our concentrations for our standards, and the absorbance values that correspond to those standards. And then separately down here at the bottom, we've labeled the samples that we have been given or that we've made or diluted. And then we've recorded their absorbance values as well. It's our job to figure out what concentration these things are, right? And the abbreviation for concentration that we use in a laboratory is bracket X. We've got to figure out what's out there, what's in those samples concentration-wise, and this is the process of how we do it. So now that I've got my data into the spreadsheet, the first thing that I have to do is make what we call a linear regression line. A linear regression line is very easy to do in Excel. Mathematicians make it more difficult than what it's supposed to be. They'll make you go through these horrible, horrendous equations to do a manual linear regression line. Why do it manually when we've got the technology to do it for us? Don't tell a mathematician that though. So what I'll do is that I will highlight the concentration, which is over here on the x-axis, and the absorbance value, which is what I have gotten from my instrument in the y-axis. So I'll click this first cell, I'll hold my mouse down, and I will highlight the standard concentrations and the absorbances. When I do that, that lets me set these groups of numbers together. Now up here at the very top, I'm going to see a tab that will say Insert. Okay, so I'm going to click the Insert tab, and then it gives me a lot of things that I can insert into my Excel spreadsheet. Pictures, clip art, shapes, all kinds of stuff. But over here, there will be a section that will be called Charts. I want to insert a chart. Now, it seems like, for some reason, we have been defaulted this Go to the Line but I don't want you to insert a line. That is not what we do in a lab. What we do is that we insert a scatter instead. The only thing that we want to do is plot the point. We don't want a line to go through those points yet. We just want to plot our points on a graph and cross our fingers that these things will line up in a straight line. That's what we're after. That's why we call it a linear regression line. The thing should be linear. So I'm going to click this button that says scatter and then it will give me a few options here under the scatter tab. Uh, I can plot the points only. I can plot the points with a curvy line through all of them. I can plot no points, just the curvy line only. I can plot the points but it will have a straight line that goes through each individual or between two points and then here is the straight line between the points without the points plotted. Okay, that's a lot of garbage. The only thing that we have to do is plot the markers or our data points. That's it. We don't want any lines, not yet. We just want to plot our data. So I've highlighted the PPM and the ABSs. I then hit scatter plot and Excel will automatically bring up this graph for me. right? Now for the most part, this thing looks linear at first glance, right? I mean these things line up in a straight line. We can't be perfect. So trying to get a perfect linear regression line is very difficult to do. But we should at least be able to look at this graph and say, you know, this thing looks pretty linear. I think I did my job very well. So if you've plotted these uh, sets of points, and you've made these standards and you've plotted the absorbances and you go to this scatter plot function and yours does not look like they line up in a straight line, you have seriously messed something up. You need to go back and figure out what you have done and fix that problem and maybe rerun those samples or that one sample to get a better regression line. Okay, that's what we're after. All of our calculations are based on this graph, so it's very important that your calibration curve be perfect. Okay, So all calculations are based 
on what we call the standard calibration curve. Okay, so that's our calibration curve. We can clean that up if we want to. There's some things that we have to put on there, and they're very important. One of the things that I have to put on there is what we call the linear regression line. Right? This is an equation, and this equation we're going to have to use eventually at some point in our data analysis. We're also going to bring in what we call an R-squared value. And an R-squared value is a correlation coefficient. It tells me how close these numbers are and how close they are in generating an actual straight line for me. The R-squared value, if I am perfect, needs to be a 1.000. That we can't get any higher than a 1. The closer you are to a 1, the better representation your calibration curve is going to be. And that's something that you're going to be judged or, if you're a student, graded on. Right? It's very important that your standards line up into a straight line. So the way that I do this data is I come up here in the graph and I click one of these data points. It doesn't matter which one I click because once I click one of them, they all become highlighted. Right? So once they all become highlighted, I'm then going to kind of hoover over that data point with my cursor and I'm going to right click on the mouse. And when I right click on the mouse, these kind of options show up for me and I'm going to go down to this option that says add a trend line. That's very important, right? That's what we're wanting to do. So they put that into an option for me, almost like a shortcut. So when I click add trend line, this box is going to show up. Now, depending on the version, it could show up like this, or it could show up here on the right hand side and maybe you have to scroll down that prompt box to find these two options at the very bottom. Display the equation on the chart and display the R squared value on the chart. I want to do both of these, right? This is the equation that I'm going to need to use and this is the R squared that tells me how close my numbers are to a straight line. And hopefully that is close to one. So once I check those two boxes, I then close this box out. There's no really save, there's no apply button that I need to do. I just check them and I hit close. And then if I look back on the graph, I now see that data that shows up right up here at the very top. So I'm just going to click that and drag it over so maybe you can see it a little bit better. And it says y equals 0.4844x plus 0.0032. Okay, so that is my equation that I'm going to need eventually to solve for my samples. My R squared number tells me how close I was to a perfect line. And this is giving me 0.9915. Now, when I choose the line and the regression coefficient, Excel has now put in the regression line on the chart. And it shows me how well these things line up to be a straight line. Maybe when you do this, you will notice that one point is just way off whack. We will allow you to delete one point only from your regression line. If you know that one point is just really messed up, you can go through and delete that one value, but you can only do it once, and you can only pick one of them to do it with. You might not need to delete any of them at all. Maybe it doesn't really make a big difference. But if it helps you, and it's clearly evident that that point is messed up, then we can delete it out, but only one. So if I look at this cow curve, I see that this point uh, doesn't really kind of fit on the line, and this point is a little below the line, right? So what I can do is over here to the side, this is the point, if I go over it, at 0.5. Right? It tells me 0.5 comma 0 0.273. So if I come over here and just delete, highlight that row, and delete those two numbers, 
the calibration curve fixes itself automatically. I don't have to do anything else to it. And look at what happened to my R squared value now. It goes up. It goes now to this point, 0 0.9979. Well, I'm going to put those two points back in there. So I'm just going to hit Control-Z, which will be un undo. That's the shortcut for undo. Or up here at the very top hand, you'll see this arrow that goes backward that says undo. So either one you can choose. So this gives me back down to the original, 0.9915. Well, we also said that this point is a little bit below, right? So that point is 0 0.75, 0 0.346. So I'm going to highlight those two numbers and hit delete. And this gives me 0 0.9951. Well, if I deleted that set, it gives me a better regression line. But by deleting the other point, I got an even better regression line, right? So out of the two, if I'm going to have to get rid of one of them, I'm going to get rid of the 0.5 and the 0.273, so that way I get a better regression line in the very end. So that's my calibration curve. And we use this calibration curve to determine what my sample concentrations are going to be. And you know, this makes me feel pretty comfortable. Visually, it looks like a straight line. My R squared value is 0.998, basically, if I round it that up. Uh, that's really close to a 1. I know I'm not going to get perfect. Maybe if you're lucky, you do. Or if you're really, really good at what you do, you'll get a 1. Uh, but this is acceptable. I feel good about these numbers. So in the next video, we'll talk about how to use this calibration curve now and how to use the equation and solve for our samples. So again, our samples are A, B, and C, and I've got absorbances that go with each one of those, and we need to figure out what these concentrations should be. So that's what we'll talk about next.